Burnout is, at the most basic level, a form of exhaustion. Burnout is a result of excessive and prolonged physical, mental, and emotional stimulation, disruption, and stress. So notice that I use these three words very intentionally. Not only is it physical, mental, and emotional stimulation, right? Because there's a lot of stimulation if you're like always going to like events and parties and social things and this, that, and the other. So that's stimulation. But then there's also physical and mental disruption as well. For example, if you were getting used to a lot of space and quiet during COVID, you were going inward, your true nature, your true needs started to speak up during COVID because you actually were forced to get quiet. Now you disrupt that with music festivals and doing all the things and parties and networking and events and da, 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 da. So not only does that stimulate you, but then that also can disrupt the new baseline that you may have created for yourself. And then there's a stress that comes with that too. Other people, unexpected things, pivoting, cancellations, travel hiccups, scheduling mishaps, communication errors, and so forth, right? And so it's not just doing a lot, but it's also the stress that comes with it and the disruption that comes with that as well. Burnout happens when you're constantly overwhelmed, overbooked, overstressed, overextended, emotionally drained, and unable to keep up. Burnout will never go away on its own, and it requires intentional action. <laughs> Signs you are experiencing burnout, decreased motivation at work and daily tasks, no time for self-care, healing work, self-development, negative attitude towards yourself and others, constantly drowning at work, health issues, migraines, stomach aches, insomnia, moodiness, irritability, and short temper, suicidal thoughts, fragility, and hopelessness. Withdrawing and running away from support systems, excessive use of alcohol and drugs, excessive use of soothing mechanisms, coping mechanisms, all addictions, feeling numb and disconnected from your feelings. And then lastly, existential crisis. Let's talk about the difference between burnout, stress, and depression. Stress often refers to having too much on your plate. You got to juggle this. All right, I got like this schedule here and this. And you're like, your, your energy is like outward focus, right? Like your energy is like, okay, like what do I do with this plate? Where does this plate go? Okay, where does that plate? How do I put this? And that's like when you're more like in a stress state. Burnout now to me is like what happens when the stress is prolonged, when there's too much of it for too long, then you eventually burn out. Burnout refers to not having enough internally, because you put all of your extra energy into figuring all these things out. And then what happens after you're done, you come home and crash. So now you don't have enough motivation. You don't have enough desire. You don't have enough energy, compassion, interest. It's about you not having enough on the inside, whereas stress is having too much on the outside. Now, depression impacts our daily life outside of work. And it comes with persistent feelings of worthlessness and helplessness. Not that it has to be linear, but if we were like on a linear path, to me, it would be like stress comes first, then burnout. Then when we don't take care of that, we don't take action that can now plummet into depression, right? Because we're not taking action. We're not taking care of ourselves. We're not acknowledging how we feel. We're not tending to our needs. We're not tending to our emotions. We're not, we're not like facing the fact that we actually need help. We're not facing the fact that we actually feel scared, frustrated, annoyed, sad. We suppress, we repress, we depress. And then that eventually can turn into depression. So let's talk about the five stages of burnout. Phase one, the honeymoon phase. 
you just got your promotion, you're elated, you just got your new job, oh my God, your commute just cut in half, you're going to make $20,000 more, you just got a new position, you're starting at a new company, they give you lunch every day, you're so excited, and then the onset of stress begins, the honeymoon wanes and the pressure starts to build. Chronic stress, the pressure compounds and you start to give things up. You start to give up your workouts. You start to give up your morning routine. You start to give up your meditation practice. And then you go to stage four, burnout. You reach your limit and can no longer function. You finally tap out. And then five, habitual burnout. When you leave the burnout untreated, it becomes chronic and normal. This is when other areas of your life start to fall apart, including your physical and mental health, relationships, and job status. Anxiety and depression starts to set in. Your coping mechanisms, aka your addiction, start to come back full force. And now you're like for real on the hamster wheel and you can't get out. Shame is an unpleasant self-conscious emotion and it's typically associated with a negative view of yourself. It makes you want to withdraw and it usually comes with feelings of distress, exposure, mistrust, powerlessness, and worthlessness. Shame is a self-punishing acknowledgement and painful emotion that responds to a sense of failure to attain an ideal state. Shame is the lowest vibration and it's the polar opposite of love and abundance. Love and abundance vibration rises where shame drags down. Shame is not just sinking and shrinking energy, it's withdrawal energy. So always think of it as you're tapping out versus tapping in. So when you feel shame, you're tapping out. If you feel shame, you're tapping out on yourself. You're tapping out on your relationships. You're tapping out on connection. You're tapping out on love versus tapping into it. Burnout shame is just being ashamed to admit that you're burning out or that you are burned out or on the verge of burning out. And so therefore you hide your actual true feelings, condition, and needs. But the shame actually accelerates the burnout. When you're in that shame, you actually accelerate. Like you're literally burning out your tires because of all the friction caused by the lack of acceptance, which actually makes more stagnation. Now, remember, shame perpetuates the belief that there's something wrong with you and that somehow you're incapable, incompetent, and that somehow you're bad for needing help or rest. Let's talk about why we end up even experiencing burnout shame in the first place. So how did we even get there? It all always comes down to fear to begin with. We have a fear of rejection. We all have a fear of failure. We all have a fear of weakness, judgment, abandonment, exposure. We're afraid of losing. We're afraid like, oh, if I take a leave now, or if I take a break now, what if I get passed up on this promotion? What if I'll lose out on my bonus? What if I'll you know, miss out on this opportunity or whatever? There's all of this fear that comes up if we let anybody know that somehow we are anything less than 110%. What will people think? How will they view me? We often view burnout as failure. We view burnout as a sign of weakness. We think smart and successful people shouldn't burn out. Burnout forces us to slow down, but then that also brings up the shame in going slower. Burnout forces us to face our feelings, our shadows, our weaknesses, and all the ways that we've been lying to ourselves and others to keep up the front. <laughs> here are signs that you have burnout shame. You feel ashamed about your burnout. Going through the motions and appearing fine out in the world. Hiding the fact that you feel tired, need help, or need rest. Saying yes to things in fear others will find out you are wearing thin. Saying yes to things in fear that they'll find out that you're worthless. Saying yes to things in fear that they will find out you are incompetent. Disappearing, ghosting, disengaging, running away, overspending, overspending on dining out, shopping, and traveling. And then here's the ultimate shame, feeling guilty and self-loathing that you got yourself so exhausted in the first place. And then also feeling guilty that you're taking breaks 
as it's happening. And then back to the hiding, hiding or lying about your exhaustion and then just powering through. So here's the thing, right? If you have burnout shame, you don't want to admit that you're exhausted and that you're tired, right? Because you're afraid of what it's going to mean about you, et cetera, et cetera. So instead you escape, you shop, you keep saying yes, right? And so that is how this burnout shame works. So how do we overcome it? First of all, when we allow ourselves to feel, acknowledge, accept, ask for help and share our struggles, then we're able to dissolve the shame and ultimately make it harder for the burnout to take hold and wreak havoc. So think about it. As soon as you start to feel the burnout, if you say, hey, hold on, I'm starting to feel really burned out. You just name it right away. It will literally like be less likely to take a hold of you. Name what you are feeling shame about. So it might literally be like, I feel shame that like I said no to all of these speaking engagements. I feel shame that I had to ask for a leave. I feel shame that I don't want to do anything for the next three weekends. I feel shame that I'm slowing down. Just naming that already makes such a huge difference. What are the stories you are making up about why you need to power through? Why are you even making up that story in the first place? Like, where did that come from? So we want to name it. We want to understand the stories around it. And then we need to just identify the help that we need. They say, they, okay, and I say that with big air quotes, they, they say that when you're burned out, it can take anywhere from 11 weeks to a year to recover. So the sooner you ask for help, the sooner you'll be able to get out of it. This is why you have to actually name the help that you need. Ask yourself, like, what is the help that you need and how will it actually help you succeed? Yeah. 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 Yeah.